Hello and welcome to another Ask Narita Joy video. I have a new model with me tonight and her name is Claudia. And Claudia is a really great model for us and a little different because she has a very sensitive skin that is prone to a little bit of dermatitis. And, um, and I can see that she's got, she, I asked her before if she noticed that she gets little bumps on her skin and she said yes, that she noticed it and it started to come up just last week. So I thought, well, this is a good model for us to see because it is somebody that we will not be doing our regular regimen on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by cleansing Claudia's skin and then I'm going to bring the lights over and have a look. And, uh, and see what we're going to be doing with her today. So I am going to be using the K cleanser because what's so great about this cleanser is that it's a light non-foaming gel cleanser and it's really nice for sensitive skin. It's, um, it's just great and I use it on probably 90% of my clients, if not more. It uh, tends to work for everybody. And it also takes off eye makeup, which is really great without stinging your eyes. So you can put a little bit on a cotton ball and use it on your eyes first before you start to cleanse the face. And that's really nice to have a cleanser, an all-in-one cleanser that removes your eye makeup and doesn't sting your eyes. So that's what I use at home. It's also a really nice cleanser for men that uh, tend to get really irritated. Their skin gets irritated for shaving. So it's, um, it's something that men really like to shave with. And this is the, uh, the K cleanser. So we're just doing one cleanse here. Now Claudia has the type of skin that is very sensitive. So less is almost better for her. She doesn't need anything too strong on her skin. She also gets quite dark around her eye area and a lot of that's allergy based. So clearly she's someone who really suffers with different allergies and that could be um, external as well as internal dietary. So these are my disposable sponges that I really like to use. They're a cellulose sponge and they're disposable for me. I like everything or as much as I can work with disposable. I really do like to work with disposable items. I find it saves uh, a lot less time for me for cleaning as well as it's, uh, it's just nicer to have items that you can throw away after each client. Of course, we want to be as hygienic as possible, so anything that we can dispose of on, uh, on a regular basis per client, it's what we want to be doing. Okay, so we just cleansed Claudia's skin off. I'm going to just dry her skin, pat her skin dry with a tissue, and we're going to bring the light over and have a look at her skin. So I'm putting some goggles over Claudia's eyes before we bring the light over. So what we are looking at here and what's really good, um, it's good that we have a model, uh, Claudia, as I said, is something a little bit different. What we're seeing on her is that she does, she is prone to dermatitis and you can see she has these tiny little bumps here on this cheek. Um, it's minimal, but she has these tiny little bumps and they're a form of dermatitis. She also on her forehead, and I'm going to move the Maggie lamp up here onto her forehead area. You can see where the skin is, it's very sensitive and it is, it can easily flare up and be red. And you can see where the skin is almost a little bit kind of thickened. And this is what happens. It's important that when you do have dermatitis, it's important to use the prescription um, hydrocortisone cream and sometimes they will give you a steroid cream too to use on it the dermatologist but it does create sort of a thickening like a different texture in the skin and that's what we're seeing here on her forehead it's um, these tiny this tiny rash here on her forehead but then you've got these tiny little bumps that are not really pimples but this is what we call dermatitis and, um, and as I said, this is kind of a thickening what, with what happens to the skin. It, it's a very sensitive area and it's an area where you really can't do strong exfoliants on, you can't use scrubs on this area and it, you have to really handle it with kit gloves. So what we have with Claudia's skin is we have a very sensitive skin and it's sensitive to products. 
she has to be very careful in what she uses on her skin that nothing is too strong and too irritating. And sometimes when you start to use a product that is irritating and you do get a little bit of dermatitis, you notice that the skin almost looks really dehydrated and it also starts to thicken a little bit. Then it gets these tiny little red bumps, which is what we saw through the Maggie lamp. And hers is a very mild case of dermatitis. Sometimes we get it around the mouth area too, which is the perioral dermatitis. So you'll see that these tiny, tiny little red bumps, not really pustules or papules, they're just tiny bumps that you really just need to use. First of all, you do need to see a dermatologist to be able to get a prescription cream, which is your hydrocortisone cream to use on that. But um, because her skin is very sensitive, we don't want to do anything abrasive. I'm going to do an exfoliant on her, but I'm going to use a purifying mask. I don't want to use anything um, with glycolic in it that's going to irritate her skin. So we're going to use more the papyr enzyme that's just going to work on have it, they're having that buffing effect on the epidermis that's just going to absorb dead cells but not be too irritating and burning the skin. We do not want to be burning the skin at all. Um, as I said, it's something that she said she noticed it coming up about uh, a week ago and it is, um, it's a lot of the, the treatment products that you put on your skin once you have dermatitis, they will just irritate it more. So you really do need to have a prescription cream that will, uh, that you can use on it and just use it for about two or three days and you'll find it will get so much better just by doing that. So we're going to continue with our treatment. First, we're going to be doing the exfoliation, but we are going to be doing that with a purifying treatment, which is going to have that absorbing, um, absorb the dead cells and have that buffing effect on the epidermis, still in a similar way to the exfoliating mask, but without the irritation and without the glycolic in it. So this one here is a purifying mask, and this is what I'm going to use as my exfoliant on Claudia today. I, um, I just want to do a very gentle treatment on her. I want to help her eye area. She gets a little puffy and she's dark around her eyes. And looking at her skin closely now, I realize that a lot of her darkness around her eyes is allergy based. She has, um, she, she said she gets puffy around her eyes, but also she gets these fine little lines. And you can see she just has this, um, this little bulging area here that's underneath her eye area where she's retaining a little bit of fluid. So we're going to do some nice work around her eyes. I'm going to massage that area and do some drainage and we're going to um, just work on hydrating her skin without it being too aggressive. So this one here we're just using as an exfoliant on Claudia and it has a little bit of the uh, papyr enzyme in it so it, we know it's going to absorb those dead cells. We're just removing the exfoliating treatment which is in uh, Claudia's case purifying mask today. It's very gentle and it, uh, it just has a light exfoliation by absorbing dead cells. definitely do not want to be using anything scratchy or burning on her skin because her skin is prone to dermatitis and she suffers a lot with allergies. I can see that by the colouring around her eyes. So we just want to be ever so gentle with her today. So we know there are many different reasons as to why people get dermatitis. So there's a topic, um, it can be from makeup, it can be from treatment products, from things that are too strong and, and also it's stress related. So at a lot of the time when people get dermatitis just around the corners of the nose or here in the eyebrows, it's very often stress related. And I myself have been known to get dermatitis on my hands, on the tops of my hands, but it usually happens when I'm stressed. It's not from any particular product. It is just when I get really stressed and, and that is what happens for me. So Claudia has um, a little bit, she has a little bit on her cheeks here, but she has it mostly on her forehead. And what's recommended is, as I said, is to get a prescription cream for it. There are usually two or three different treatment um, creams 
that are prescribed for dermatitis. And if you find that you start to use one and it's not working, then there are a couple of others out there. So if it doesn't work within two or three days, you need to go back to your dermatologist and get a different one or have them uh, call in a different treatment um, product for you for the dermatitis because it usually recovers very quickly once you get the right cream. So it's important to nip it and to get onto a prescription cream as quickly as possible if you notice that you're getting this redness with these tiny, tiny little bumps either side of the nose or on the forehead. And, it, and as I said, and what happens also is the skin gets a little bit thickened there with it as well. So you want to really sort of nip that and, uh, and get that early. So we will not be doing any AHAs or retinols on Claudia's skin, but I am going to use my Q-flavonoid, which is the bioflavonoids um, that has the Arnica and it has the vitamin K in it, um, a little bit of chamomile. We're gonna use it around her eye area too, where she gets quite dark around her eye area. And we're also gonna do a little bit of drainage because she has this pocket right under her eyes that is uh, a little puffy. So we wanna make sure we do some good drainage here around the eye area as well. So this here is my Q-flavonoid that I'm uh, going to be using. And as I said, I'm going to put it all over her face, but I'm going to make sure that we do it really well around her eyes because I wanna help that darkness around her eye area today. Her skin's really strong, you know, she's got really good muscular structure under there. So it, it's, um, she's got a good skin and it's, it's hydrated. Her levels are hydrated. She looks a little dehydrated around her eye area, but that's just where it's the skin is pulling and because she gets a little puffy and it, um, because of the irritation that happens around her eyes, she probably would have a difficult time if she tried to wear certain eye makeups. I think her eye area, just looking at her eyes, is a very sensitive area. So uh, I, I actually might just ask you, Claudia, do you, have you noticed if you work, if you use eyeshadows or different eye products, do you find that your eyes are sensitive? Do they ever get itchy and dry? Mm -hmm. They do, yeah. And have you found that there is a particular makeup or something that you can use where you're always safe? When you go to use it, you don't have that sort of dryness and irritation where the skin gets like, it looks like it's pulling and it looks like it hurts. Do you have some that are no. successful? No, so far, I think I, cause I have different brands. Yes. And I was kind of playing around with them. I noticed that some, it irritates my eyes really bad. Yeah. In the mornings, like, as I'm putting my makeup on, my mm. eyes are, like, watery already. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. But I've been, usually, I've been using the same type of makeup for a couple of years, but the eyeshadows, I kind of switched around a little bit, and I think that's what's causing the irritation in my eyes. Okay, so different, some mm -hmm. different brands mm -hmm. are really, yeah, yes. really irritating, yeah. And is it eyeshadows as well as mascaras, or is it just bulkly eyeshadows that just do the it? Just eyeshadows. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes when eyeshadows have the sparkle and they have the mica, mm -hmm. um, they're often very irritating to a lot of people, so unfortunately. Um, but it's, uh, it is, it's hard sometimes when you have really sensitive eyes to be able to find makeups that tend to work really well and don't irritate the eyes. Mm -hmm. I often find when I work with um, clients that are very sensitive mm -hmm. that a lot of the mineral makeups tend to be better for them, which is your, mm -hmm. your Color Science or your Jane Iredell or your La Bella Donna. Uh, they're pure mineral makeups and they're the ones that seem to not be as irritating is, uh, has been my experience. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I know a lot of the the makeups are very irritating. So we've worked in the Q-flavonoid there. Her skin's almost a bit sticky to the touch. I've used quite a lot on her skin because I can't put a lot of other things on her skin. And I want her skin to really soak this up because this is what's going to help uh, calm her skin down. And it's going to really help with those that eye area as well. I am going to be putting some eye gel on over top of uh, over top of the Q-flavonoid, and then I'm just going to be using a very gentle hydrating 
treatment cream, which is called, it's actually a hydrating mask, but it has uh, a lot of the really hydrating ingredients in it. So I love shea butter and I love jojoba oil and I love these certain things for the um, for really sensitive dry skin. It really tends to feed the skin very nicely. So we're just gonna put a little bit of the the eye gel now and, uh, and a hydrating treatment, but your skin's already looking really nice. So this one here is the eye gel, and I like the eye gel a lot because it's really good for sensitive skin, and so many people have sensitive skin, and so many people have darkness around the eyes as well as puffiness. So this is a hydrating gel uh, that is excellent for puffiness and dark circles. So it's a, a really good one. Uh, there are quite a lot of brands out there, but it's hard to find a gel that doesn't dehydrate. I find it really difficult to find good eye gels that hydrate, so that also work on puffiness and dark circles. So this one is a really good one. It's the Rejuvi Eye Gel, and uh, we're just going to work with that around the eyes a little bit. Now, is there certain times of the month that you notice, Claudia, that your eyes get more puffy than others, or is it, it just happens randomly? I think it happens randomly. Yeah. So we want to just massage around under the eyes here. We just want to move, get some movement there, and just to help the, uh, the lymph build up just to get rid of that a little bit. I want to get rid of some of those toxins there. And just after you massage the eye area for a little bit, you really notice a difference in the color. The color around the eyes gets so much better just within you know five or 10 minutes of massaging the eye area. It just makes such a difference. So massage is just so important. We've done a, a little bit of massage around Claudia's eyes and you can really see that already her eye area is looking better just from the, the little bit of massage that I was doing. But I am going to start working in some other treatment products now so that we really, uh, so I can do a really good massage on her. Now this is my massage cream that is really nice and nourishing and it, uh, it's actually, actually a massage, it's actually a, a hydrating mask. But, um, but I like to use it for my massage because it really works, it, get, it works into the skin really well, it absorbs into the skin really well. And I really like to have a good massage cream that I know is going to get in there and hydrate the levels. So Claudia's regimen at home just needs to be really simple. She needs good hydrating products. She doesn't need anything too stimulating, nothing too stingy, no AHAs right now, no retinols. She just needs really good hydrating products that tend to really support her little blood vessels, that support the eye area where she has dark circles around her eyes but just to really help the fact that her skin's really sensitive and her skin is, gets irritated easy. So we want to give her things that are just going to protect her skin and not irritate her skin too much. So I would not be inclined to give Claudia a vitamin C product. I would stay away from the, the true citrus items because sometimes that can be a little bit irritating on a very sensitive skin too. So I would be more inclined to give her products that tend to coat the skin a little bit, that protect the skin but don't suffocate the skin. Because the one thing about a skin that when it gets dermatitis you don't, it's not like you can go and use a thick ointment that maybe you might use for like a diaper rash, like the A&D ointment that is fabulous for some things, but it really, it doesn't allow the skin to breathe and it is like having a raincoat on the skin that you really, uh, you know, it suffocates the skin. So with dermatitis, you wanna make sure that the skin isn't being suffocated, but you, you want to, it, it needs to have some protection. So it needs to have very soothing, calming ingredients. 
And people can be allergic to a lot of different products. So even really natural products, people don't realize, they think that if you're using something organic or natural that you can't be allergic to it. But what's really important to understand is that, you know, people are allergic, as I am allergic myself to grapes, highly allergic to grapes and um, very allergic to seafood. Um, you know, although it's all natural and organic, it's for, for me, it's um, deadly, you know. So it's, it's just really important to understand that, you know, allergies, uh, we really need to take them very serious. And it, it, regardless of whether something's organic or not, it makes no difference. People are very allergic to lavender and they're very allergic to a lot of organic oils and natural things. So we just sort of want to be very careful in how um, just how you choose products for sensitive people, for people that have very sensitive skin. And you want to make sure that things are really sort of coated well and not in their raw state because raw state products are often a little bit, um, they're too strong. And even essential oils in their, their very true raw state, you can't put them directly on the face. So you really need to make sure that they are buffered on it for a sensitive skin and, uh, and that they, um, they're just not too strong because uh, raw products in, like aloe vera, the aloe vera plant, you can put that on your body once you break off a leaf or cut part of the leaf but if you put it directly on your face, it'll burn the skin and you can get a chemical burn. So you just want to make sure it is, it, it's like a chemical burn because you, you know, the same with essential oils. If you use true, just raw essential oils, they can burn the skin and that's, uh, it, it, it looks like a chemical burn. It is a chemical, a form of a chemical burn. So it's very, very important that you understand that even raw natural products uh, can be too aggressive and too strong on most people's skin. Uh, working on the body is different, but on the face, it's a very sensitive skin, the face and the neck. So you want to make sure that you're not being, um, you're really buffering back your products and just being very careful in what you're putting on the face. I had a very interesting conversation with a client uh, one day and she had come to see me. She had had uh, a serious burn from an IPL, which is a photofacial. And it was interesting to me because photofacials is one of the milder lasers that is used for removing brown spots. And it, uh, it's something she had had it done a couple of years prior to coming to see me and her skin on one side, she said when she was having it done by the operator, that it really burnt her and then the operator ended up turning it down. She said it did not feel like a rubber band hitting her face, which is what the IPL feels like when you have an IPL, uh, the photofacial's done. Um, but, but half of her face, even still two years later, is really burnt and it really was um, very obviously very upsetting to her. And I just would like to point out that, as she said, there are groups out there that really help people when they do have serious burns and they have laser done, whether it be a, a Fraxel laser or whatever type of laser they're having done. There's uh, a lot of people that have had serious problems from it and have been seriously burnt and uh, really sort of suffering. So there are groups out there to, to help people um, so that they can talk to people about the, um, the problems they've had. And I, I think that, you know, a lot of people think that when they go and get a laser treatment done, that everything's going to be great and uh, in a lot of cases there are problems and people need to be aware that um, if you are somebody who has had a problem with laser that there are groups out there that uh, you can um, you know have a conversation obviously talk to and be involved with to be able to um, get healing and uh, it's really important because there are some pretty serious treatments out there that are just a little bit too aggressive and have really scarred people mentally and uh, emotionally and um, emotionally and physically so it's really good to know that um, there are support teams out there 
helping. So we're massaging in this massage cream and it's very nice. We don't want to be doing too much on Claudia's skin today and just mostly because when you have dermatitis you don't want to be overdoing anything. You certainly don't want to be creating too much heat either. So massage will create some heat in the skin. We do not want to be doing that. We don't want to be overstimulating. So it's, uh, it's important to, to not be uh, too crazy with the massage on someone who does have dermatitis. We really want to keep the skin cooler and be very gentle. So we are going to layer over top of this. We're going to do a mask and, uh, and just keep this on her skin. It's, um, Claudia has really, you know, she's got a really strong skin. It's really, her levels are really good. They're hydrated, but it's really strong, which is nice. But I am going to, I'm gonna put a little bit more eye gel around her eyes right now. And I'm going to put some pads on and then we're gonna layer a mask over top. So what I'm putting on Claudia's skin, I've still got the hydrating mask on which I used as my massage cream and I'm leaving that on her skin. Underneath that she has the Q-flavonoid which is what is a really good uh, serum that really helps support the skin. It feeds the skin, it, it has a lot of nutrients in it and we just don't want to overdo anything too much on Claudia because she is a little bit sensitive today because she does have a little bit of dermatitis and her eye area we just want to protect that I've got the eye gel on underneath the eye pads here I've mixed two the the pearl silk mask which is two powder packets that I mix together that you have to mix together dry first and I'm doing the pearl silk on her it's a really nice gentle mask it has a brightening effect on the skin but it's, uh, it's just a very gentle mask too. So it's very nice for sensitive skin. So we're just going to put this one on Claudia's skin. I'm just going to mix, add the water now. And I like to use the rubber bowls because it allows me to be able to maneuver the uh, the powder as I go to put it on the skin and this is just like mixing a cake right now okay so we've got our pearl silk we're going to put this on now on the skin and we're going to pour it on and just put it all over the face here So as I said, with someone who has dermatitis, you don't want to create too much heat and you don't want to do too much massage, too much of anything. You don't want anything too strong on the skin. It's really not ideal to have a treatment when you have dermatitis. It's sometimes it can be soothing and calming on the skin because it does get a little bit uh, dry and almost thickened a little bit too. So, you know, it can be soothing and calming. And in Claudia's case, we really haven't done very much. We've just cleansed her skin. I've done the purifying mask, which is just a very gentle mask to act as an exfoliant in the, in the beginning stages. And, uh, and then we've worked in the Q-flavonoid, which just feeds the skin a little bit. It helps support sensitive skin. And then we've worked in the hydrating treatment, which is a hydrating mask that has a little bit of the, um, the sumer extract. It has, um, let me actually tell you what the ingredients it has in it. It has the shea butter. It also has the sumer extract. It has allantoin. It has vitamin E and lecithin. It is um, just very soothing and very calming on the skin. So I do like to, it's what I like to massage with. It's a really great massage cream. And it's a really nice moisturizer for just really dry skin. So I have several of my clients that use that over the winter months and it's um, 
They use it as an extra moisturiser that they can put on their skin a couple of nights a week if they like, and they just leave it on their skin and go to bed with it on. Righty, so I'm just going to put a little tissue over this and it's going to hold it in place so it doesn't run everywhere. And it also allows me to be able to push down and mould it to the face a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to leave this on the skin for 8 to 10 minutes and we shall be back shortly to take that off. So I'm going to take a little bit from the top here and we're just going to put it across the lips so that I can push down on that area too. There we go. So we're just going to leave, uh, leave Claudia for a moment. We'll be back in eight to 10 minutes to take it off. Okay, so we are back to take off Claudia's mask. She has a pearl silk on. Underneath it, we left the massage cream on that we worked into her skin, it had a little bit of Q-flavonoid and a little bit of the eye gel. So we're gonna take it off now and then put on her treatment products for home tonight. So even with laying tissue around the hair, it still manages to get in the hair a little bit. So it's really important to try and protect the hair as much as possible. I did not do as great a job this time of protecting the hair. Now Claudia said she had been trying, uh, she's been using a couple of different makeups and she noticed that her skin got more irritated and a little bit of dermatitis after she started a new makeup that she was trying. So it's, uh, it's something that, you know, in her case is um, very likely topically. She also said that she was under quite a bit of stress. And as I said, usually when you get dermatitis and it's stress related, you get it around the sides of the nose. She has a little bit there, but you also can get it in the eyebrows. When you get it on other areas of the face, around the mouth area, it, uh, it very often is um, from something topical that's been put on the skin or a makeup or a toothpaste and uh, something different, something new that, we're, um, that you would be sensitive to. But Claudia's, most of hers I noticed up here on her forehead. So I'm suggesting that she either go back to her other makeup that she was using or to try a different makeup and preferably a mineral makeup, which is the, the minerals are just, as I always say, are very healing on the skin and uh, tend to be less irritating for a lot of people. So her skin is looking really nice. I'm going to put on a little bit more of the Q flavonoid and we'll be putting on her nighttime moisturizer that she'll be using at home and some more eye product. And I'm not afraid to use the Q on anything that, uh, on anywhere there's dermatitis because I, I find that it um, tends to be something that's just so soothing and it uh, often helps with most problems with the skin, so anything that's irritated, uh, chemical burns, anything that's a little stingy, it's really great. So we've got the eye gel again, we're going to put it around the eye area. We're not double dipping, we're using the other end of the Q-tip. And now we're going to be putting on her night cream. And I'm giving her a slightly more nourishing line in the Rejuvi line, it's the Rejuvi Plus line. And I'm just going to give her um, a slightly different treatment product from some of my past models. So remember we did leave the hydrating mask on her skin underneath the Pearl Silk mask. So we do not need to be putting a lot of any product on her skin. Her skin is really hydrated. 
it looks great, it looks nice and calm on her forehead as well. So we just want to let that soak in and I'm going to have Claudia back so we will uh, be able to see how she's doing with her dermatitis and how she's doing with just the, the very simple home regimen that I'm giving her which is a very gentle cleanser for her skin, the Q-flavonoid which again feeds the skin those nutrients but also just is really good when the skin's really sensitive and she's going to be using it around her eye area where she has quite a lot of colour. She's got an eye gel so we want her to sort of work on the eye area just to help with the puffiness and the darkness around her eyes and then we also have um, a day and a night cream that she's going to be using but nothing I'm giving her has retinols in it and nothing has the alpha hydroxy acids which is your glycolic lactic malic tartaric and citrus it is all just pure hydration and everything that's soothing and calming so we will have Claudia back in a month or so and just see how she's doing with her products so Claudia thank you so much for coming today and joining us for our Ask Nero to Joy videos and I hope that you have been able to zoom in and have a look at that dermatitis for all you Estes out there to be able to see what dermatitis looks like, those tiny little bumps that we pointed out and uh, we'll be back to see Claudia in a month so thanks for joining me today and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.